So I want to just kind of start there. To open up a property uh, from your search results, you can do one of two things. You can come down and simply click on the View Reports button, and it'll open up any of the properties that you have checked off over here. They're all going to be checked by default. So in this case, if I click View Reports, it's going to open up all 126 properties. Um, or if you want to pull up a specific property, just double click on that property anywhere on the grid, and it'll go ahead and open up that property detail report. You'll still be able to, once you open up the property detail report, get from one property to the next in your list. Over there on the right-hand side, you'll see uh, a little list over there on the right where you can sort through those properties, um, and you can click on any of those to go from one to the other. Um, again, if there's a photo available, there'll be a little thumbnail image over there on the right-hand side from the MLS. If you want to hide that, just click the little double arrows over there in the upper right-hand corner, and that'll give you a little more space to work with on your property detail report. So for this example property that we pulled up, it's got some photos coming from the MLS. Um, as you'll see, it's an active listing in the MLS currently. Um, it's also a bank-owned sale, so it's flagged up there at the top with that uh, bank-owned sale indicator. Um, as I scroll down here, similar to your classic setup, um, you know, we tried to make these as close to your classic uh, reports as possible, the owner information, the location, uh, the tax info. Um, your tax and assessment data has been grouped nicely into a little table here now. Um, you know, the three-year running look at the tax and assessment values, as well as the, uh, the tax uh, values for this particular property. Okay, three-year look at that. Uh, the characteristics. This is where you'll start to see um, some composite data, some data that's coming not only from the um, tax record, but also from the MLS. Anywhere that you see this, uh, um, uh, anywhere that you see these italicized or you see a slash, so for example, bedrooms here, um, if I hover over that, that italicized three means that that data is coming from the MLS. Whereas if I go down to bathrooms, um, that two is not italicized. That's coming both from the tax and the MLS. It matches, so it's showing two. Um, for bedrooms, we're only getting data from the MLS, not from the actual um, tax database on this particular property. Okay, same thing for uh, uh, full baths. We have two in the tax record, two in the MLS. So um, over here on the right, garage capacity, we're getting two from the MLS, but nothing from the tax record. So, um, so you could see one value. You could see uh, one value that's the same in both places. You could see two values that are differing. So maybe... Uh, you know, for this particular property, maybe, uh, you know, on another property it has three bedrooms in the MLS but four in the tax record or vice versa, then it would say three slash four. So you'll see that composite data uh, next to each other um, in, the, uh, in the system wherever it's available. Okay. So there's your characteristics. Um, estimated value, again, this is the real AVM value. Um, giving you uh, the, the AVM value, the confidence score, and the forecast standard deviation. Um, this is a nice new feature. It will tell you what the confidence score and the standard deviation, how those are, you know, what those mean, what those values mean. Basically, higher confidence scores and lower standard deviations are better as far as an estimated value, and that's how it determines the AVM range that it comes up with over here on the left. So, keep in mind. Um, Whenever you go to print or save or email any of these uh, reports, you'll see down here in the lower right-hand corner the print button, the save button, the email button. You have the ability to take out any of the sections that you see here. So, for example, the estimated value. Maybe you don't want to include that estimated value when you go to email this out to a customer or when, it, or when you print this out. Down here at the bottom, no matter which option you're choosing, whether you're printing it, saving it to your computer, or emailing it, um, you'll have the ability down here to do either a quick print or, or quick email or quick save or a customized one. If you do a quick one, then it's just going to print, save, or email exactly what you're looking at on that particular report. If you do a customized, then you'll have the ability at the bottom there to check or uncheck any of those options that are available uh, on that particular report. So if you decide at this point before you email this out, you'd like to take out the uh, estimated value, and you can come in and under the property details section, take out the estimated value section. Or maybe you'd like to leave out the market trends report completely. Or maybe you'd just like to take out the financial health section of the market trends. Then you have the ability to completely control the different sections that are included on that printout or on that report, okay. on that email. Right. So I just wanted to kind of bring that up. You do have that ability at any point, save or email the report, and you can customize that, or you can um, go ahead and do the whole package if you like. Um, listing information, so it's going to show you the most recent listing as well as any other listing history available to it. 
Um, when we go live, this will actually be a reverse link back to the MLS as well. So you'll be able to click the MLS number and go back to the uh, um, listing sheet from the actual MLS in another window. Okay. Uh, the market sale, the last, uh, last market sale of that property will show, and then also the sale history of that property. Okay. Um, so you'll see uh, you know, any previous sale history down there, including any nominal sales down at the bottom. So if it were a you know, foreclosure or a marriage or divorce or something like that, you'll see the nominal indicator there, which means you know, money didn't actually change hands in that particular transaction, um, but there was a change to the deed. In this case, you know, when we're looking at a, a foreclosure. Um, and then also the mortgage history down below. Now the mortgage history is going to be a little different in the current version of, or in the new version of Realist. You're only going to see mortgage uh, history for the current owner of the property. So you're not going to see previous mortgage history for, um, you know, mortgages that have been released or satisfied or anything like that in the past. It's only going to show mortgage history for the current owner on that property. Now there may be multiple, you know, history entries down there as far as, you know, refinances and things like that. Um, you know, new mortgages they've taken out, but it's only going to be for the current owner of that, uh, that property. Okay. So that is the property detail report. Now, once you've pulled up the property detail report, if you want to pull up any of the other reports, you'll see the tabs up here at the top, okay, the comparables, the market trends, the neighbors, the neighborhood profile. So, for example, if I want to run a comp report on this particular property, I'll click comparables. It'll go ahead and run the search. Um, it'll bring up any results that it finds to my comparable search. In this case, it only found one comparable based on that criteria that I had saved in my, in my preferences. But if you remember earlier when we were talking about preferences, I said you can change this stuff on the fly. So for this would be a good example. Maybe I want to search a greater area around this property that I'm looking at. So down here at the bottom, I can come down here without leaving this report and without going back to preferences up here. I can come down to the bottom and hit Modify Preferences. And right from there, I can come in and change any of the criteria that I need to change. So maybe I want to double this up. I'll make it two miles instead of one mile. Um, when you make that change, then, down here in the lower right-hand corner, you'll have the option to uh, submit that. If you want to submit that just for the search that you're running at that point, or if you'd like to save that as your default criteria and also submit it for the search, then you can click Save and Submit. And in that case, each time you come in, um, your preferences will already be set to what you change them to. Um, if I just click Submit, then it's only going to reflect that change for my current search that I'm doing, but it's going to leave my preferences alone um, in, my, in my preferences section. Okay, so I'm going to click Submit. That'll run my search. Now it's pulling up uh, a couple extra properties here. Uh, for my comparable search. Again, I have the same type of indicators out here. I've got the uh, photo indicator, the listing indicator, the um, distress sale and foreclosure indicators. I also have a link here to view the detail report. So um, from here, what I'm doing is actually checking off the comparables that I want to include in my report. If I need to get any more information on any of these, I can click the View Detail Report button and go ahead and open that right up. And I can get more information from there. I can close out when I'm done and I'm still on my comp search. So from here, choose your comparables that you want to include, and when you're ready, come down to the bottom and click Generate Comps Report. That will generate the report. It will include at the top a map of the um, properties that you've included in your comparables report. Um, you scroll down here, you'll get a little uh, search criteria section showing the criteria that you use. And then a summary statistics section. Again, this is in your preferences. You have an option to turn this on or off, whether you want to display this summary statistics section, as well as the uh, values down here, the real AVM value, which is you know, CoreLogic's AVM model, um, or uh, the value projected by assessment or the value projected by square footage. So those are options that you can toggle on or off as well. Um, in your uh, in your preferences section, whether or not you want to display those values. So that's your quick little summary statistics section, and then down below that you'll get the uh, details grid for your comparables. So you'll get you know your subject property, and then all your comparables out here to the right, with any of the data uh, included for those. To scroll through those, you'll simply just click the little uh, 
um, arrows up there to scroll back and forth through those uh, comparable properties. Okay. So that's your comparables report. If at any point you need to change the comparables that you've included, you can always come down here and click Edit Report, and that'll back you up to the previous step where you can check or uncheck those options. Okay. Real quickly then, the last couple items out here, market trends. Um, this is a nice new uh, report option that's available to you. Um, this will create some nice graphs and charts based on some market conditions. Um, in that particular area that you're looking at, things like median home value, uh, median list price, uh, median sale price, and you'll see these are aggregated by zip code, city, and county. Um, when you hover over them, it'll kind of highlight the ones that, you, that you're hovering over. Also, if you hover over the graph at any point, um, you'll see up there at the top, it'll give you a little, uh, little value uh, window that pops up to let you know what you're looking at there. So median list price, median sale price, sales activity, the number of sales in those particular areas of that subject property, uh, the rate change of those sales over a rolling five-month period, uh, the median price per square foot and the median square footage values for those properties, uh, distressed properties in those particular areas, the number of foreclosures, the rate change, um, the percentage of foreclosures, percentage of pre-foreclosure auction or REO properties um, in those areas. And then also the financial health, the median loan-to-value ratio, the number of negative equity properties in those areas, and also the percentage of negative property, uh, negative equity in those, in those particular areas. So some nice charts and graphs that you can include on your reports as far as the uh, uh, you know, financial health of that particular area, the market trends of that, uh, that subject property. And again, that's just the market trends tab at the top. The neighbors report. This will run a quick search out around the subject property and pull up any uh, neighbors to that uh, subject property that you're looking at. And give you a nice little neighbors report. It shows, uh, again, a map of the area that it searched, and then down below all of the neighbors and the details on those particular properties. And again, you can sort through those one by one or page by page down here at the bottom using the little arrows. Okay. So that's your neighbors report. And again, that's based on the criteria that you saved in your preferences, and you can always come down and modify those preferences if you need to. Again, I pulled up 20 properties. I put the map and the images at the top. Um, you know, maybe in this case, I only wanted to see the people on the same street. I didn't want to see the people on the street over, so I could come in and choose a geographic boundary at the same street, and then save and submit that. So it's only going to pull up properties on the same street as my subject property. And then finally, the last option here, the neighborhood profile. This is um, a nice little, again, some more graphs and charts that you can include uh, for the demographics in that particular neighborhood that that, that uh, property resides. This is based on the census information, the census tract and block of that uh, property. Um, but you'll get you know some nice graphs and charts, population by age, um, general household information, the gender, marriage information, housing values. Um, year bill, owner occupancy, renter versus uh, buyer, um, you know, mortgage versus rent payments, quality of life, the household income, the commute time, education levels, you know, those types of things. And then you get down into the schools and the businesses, so it'll pull up, you know, based on that criteria, any schools and businesses in that area. And again, you can control all this similarly to what we did a minute ago down here in the Modify Preferences section. Um, you can choose whether or not you want to include those different sections, how far out or around that subject property it's searching for businesses and schools and things like that. Um, and then, uh, you know, what business categories do you actually want to include on that report as well. Okay. And of course, you can save and submit that at any point. And remember, like we talked earlier, whenever you go to print or email or save any of this information down here, you have the ability to just do a quick email or print of whatever you're currently looking at, or you can do a customized one, which will give you the ability to check off specific items if you want to do the whole package or if you want to uncheck some of these different items in here. 
uh, to take out of that package. You can do that. Okay. Oops, I didn't mean to cancel that, or I didn't mean to email that. I wanted to cancel that out. So that's your uh, um, your property detail report and the different options up there at the top. Let me close back out of this here. So I'm going to click close report. 